I'm not gonna lie, it still is inconvenient. Hello you guys and welcome back to the Life in Germany channel. If you've not been here before, my name is Jenna. I am a Canadian who has been living here in Germany since 2014. And over here on this channel, I have been talking about my culture shocks, my experiences. I dive in and chat with experts about different topics that will help you guys relocate over here to Germany. And of course, you can also check out lifeingermany.com or the freebie checklist if you're moving to Germany yourself. Who doesn't love a good life hack? Well, the Germans, in my mind, are some of the best people to talk to when it comes to life hacks. They somehow seem to invent some of the most brilliant things that this world has ever come up with. But those small, simple things that change our lives, sometimes we have the Germans to thank for. Now, this doesn't mean that everybody in Germany knows these life hacks and follows these life hacks. These are the life hacks that I have learned from my family and friends here in Germany that have changed my life for the better. Actually, a lot of these tips came from you guys. So I have you guys to thank for all of these brilliant life hacks. Here are my favorite that I use probably on a daily basis. The most recent one, which we have discussed in a video, is the tea kettle. How many of you know what I'm going to say? This sounds like such an obvious thing, but Germans were the ones that taught me how idiotic is it for us to be filling our kettle up all the way to the top with water, boiling it only for one cup. A lot of Germans actually only fill the kettle up a little bit for whatever they need. I don't know why this is a life hack, guys, but somehow it is. For some reason, I never thought about it. I just kind of went throughout my days in Canada doing as everybody else did around me and filling the kettle up halfway or to the top to make sure that I had enough water for my mug. You only have to fill it a little bit. Another one that came from you guys when I was complaining about renovating a house here in Germany. And that has to do with the Zollstock. I used to be driven nuts by this baby here. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, it still is a little bit inconvenient. Don't get me wrong, I do still love my retractable one, which we often use in North America, but a lot of you guys told me several different reasons as to why the Zollstock is actually a much better option. I didn't agree with all of those points, but what I did agree with is that the Zollstock is actually a fantastic tool to measure corners right? You can't really use the retractable one to measure a corner. So brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Recently, I also published a video on things that Germans do in the home that you might not necessarily recognize in other parts of the world. And one of those things was something that I had learned from my German family in Berlin, and that is the handy dandy sandwich box. And I just basically slide it back into the fridge after I'm done using it, and it contains everything that you need with like your cheeses and your meats and everything for your sandwich. Pop it out in the morning if you're German and you like to have sandwiches in the morning, or for lunch or dinner, Abendbrot. This is super practical, so you don't have to take everything out and put it all back in. You just slide it out of the fridge and you're ready. Saves you quite a lot of time if you're eating as many sandwiches as we do in our household. All right, here's the stereotypical Germans know how to open beer best. It is true. I actually have to admit, it's not like a hack that you can use anything you want to open a beer bottle when you don't have a beer bottle opener. But in North America, it's not as common, I guess. A lot of us who drink a lot of beer tend to have the beer bottle opener maybe on our keychain with our keys. But here in Germany, you don't need that. A lot of people tend to open up their beers with a lighter, with another beer, basically with any sharp object possible. You can even use a Zollstock. My husband will just use anything hard that he can possibly find around him and always somehow manages. I have now perfected opening the bottle with the Feuerzeug and with another beer. This is like your gateway to being a German. You might need to speak German, but you should also learn how to open a beer bottle with anything you find in sight. All right, let's take it to the bedroom. 
So when it's laundry day, which it is today for me, I have my sense pillow here. This is the German version of the one that I always say I miss in Canada. 80 by 40 instead of 80 by 80. I think we have 70 by 30 in Canada. Anyway, there's not many pillowcases for these. So if you get like a normal set with the sheets and the pillowcases, well, chances are they're gonna look a little bit like this one here. That's a square. <laughs> So what you're going to do, like you typically would, you'll take your pillow, you'll slide it into the pillowcase. But then, of course, as you notice, you've got all this extra space here, right? It's quite a simple trick. So you've got all of this extra baggage here that we don't need. And what we're going to do, actually, is take one side and just shove it in there. Push it down to the corners. That's what I typically do. And then on the other side, like the obere side to the other end, you just push in to the bottom corners as well, and voila. It's like this tight little sack that doesn't come apart. Looks great, doesn't it? Another two-in-one life hack here is that when you're taking off a sheet, you usually take it off when it's inside out. You don't have to worry about it being inside out. You can wash it inside out because you're actually gonna put it back on inside out and I say well of course I learned this in Germany and of course I learned it from a German but I think the reason why I didn't know this before is because in Canada we don't actually change this sheet that I'm about to show you or this duvet duvet cover whatever you'd like to call it because we actually have a fitted sheet and then we have a sheet in between like another thin cotton sheet or flannel sheet or whatever in between and then the duvet of course we wash it just not as often as the Germans wash it because the Germans use their duvet really to wrap themselves in, which means it's often getting it more dirty than it does in North America. Here's the trick. You stick your cans in to the far corners. This one actually goes on sideways because I sewed this myself and decided to sew it sideways. And then you grab the corners of the sheet like so. It's easier when you're doing it with a small sheet. My son's sheet is a double, as we call it in Canada. Otherwise, in Germany, this is a 140 by 200. And then you basically just shake, shake, shake. Then go for the bottom two corners so you can shake those ones in too. Voila. Put the buttons back. And good as new. But if you guys have a hack for these fitted sheets and how to get those on easily, oh, I would love to know. I've tried to like putting your two hands and your feet in each corner and then just like, and it never works. Just gonna have to do it the normal way until one of you changes my life. Okay, here's my next life hack for you guys. I have just gotten this shelf this hanging shelf. And I always used to find it so tricky to know where the studs are to actually hang it up. And I used to take the measuring tape and measure the difference. But one of my husband's German friends when I was hanging a million different things in this apartment showed me the world's greatest trick. So if you don't know this one, you're welcome. I need to hang three of these today on the wall and I'm gonna line the picture frames up here. Just gonna open this bad boy and show you the next step. This one's easy because it's got a hole right through it so it doesn't take a genius to figure out exactly where the studs are but many of them don't have that hole right through they just have like something to hang here. So what we're gonna do is take some teas off in, some scotch tape we call it in English and a pen or a marker or something spiky that you can poke through it. So we're gonna take the tape we're gonna stick it over the holes and start it from the very, very end here. And of course, where it ends. Tuck. With my handy dandy pen here, you can usually just like put your finger along and feel where the hole is or where the marker is. It's just here, so I'm just gonna pop it in there and do a little circle. And over here, there it is. And I do it as big as the circle is so I know how much space I'm working with. Grand finale. Pop the tape off, take your frames off. All you need to do now is you've got your tape, that's the length of the shelf, you know where the holes are. You just line it up where you'd like to have it, make sure that it's straight. You can obviously use a Wasserwaage, or what do you call it in English? Leveler, I think we call it a leveler. You just stick it to the wall temporarily, hammer in your two nails or your dubun, 
Oh, I'm forgetting my English today. What's stupid? Those studs that you put in the wall and then your screws. And then once you're done, you take the tape off, you pop on your shelf and you're good to go. And to end this video on a sappy note, I will go ahead and say the biggest life hack I've learned from Germans is to be honest. I think I do that too often in my videos. It is like game changing guys, be honest seems like such a simple thing. You're like, well, why wouldn't you be honest? Well, you probably know if you've watched any of my videos before that we have a thing where we really like to sugarcoat pretty much everything in North America. So in Canada, if we have something to say or you've asked us to say something, we're gonna sugarcoat it and beat around the bush as much as we possibly can in order to avoid hurting your feelings maybe or being too direct or too insincere. But I have to be honest, this life hack has probably saved me the most time in my life here in Germany simply because people put it as it is, they say what they want, you don't have to be left guessing what's gonna happen, are we gonna hang out on this day? A German would be like, no, I'm busy, versus a Canadian would just like try to make you happy and be like, well, I have this and this, but I'll let you know, you know, if I can somehow manage to move it around, then that would be great, I'd love to hang out. No more beating around the bush for me, being honest has been the best life hack. I hope you liked this video and I hope this has inspired you to think about some of those life hacks that you absolutely love, whether you're German or you're living in Germany as a foreigner or not at all. I'm obsessed with life hacks, as I'm sure many of you are, you know, TikTok and Reels, it's all the big deal right now. So if you have any that you would be excited to mention and let all of us know about, I would love to hear your life hacks. Vielen, vielen lieben Dank und wie immer, bis später.